the most corrupt man that we know in this regime. Enter the criminals that are forwarded by ODM. Faggots, gay men, drug barons, sex pests. Where is Joho in this government? Where is Soipan Tuya in a docket as sensitive as defense? Is it because number one has made her pregnant? New details have emerged on what could have led to the disappearance of social media commentator Maverick Oko. On Monday, October 28th, an explosive post from Ayoko's social media pages took Kenyans by storm as the commentator's aide used her account to reveal she was still missing while detailing her movements before vanishing. The vocal commentator, known for her explosive posts on X, formerly Twitter, was in August 2024 charged at the Milimani court for allegedly disseminating false information through her social media account. She was granted bail of 100,000 Kenya shillings. According to her aide, since her legal troubles began, Aoko decided to lay low in the countryside, only making appearances in Nairobi to attend to her court duties. The aide further details that the first signs of trouble occurred two weeks ago when Ayoko returned home to find her door hinges had been tampered with while her caretaker also reported strange men hovering around her neighborhood. She called me panicked. I asked her to take pictures and leave. She decided not to say it to prevent drawing attention that she was around. The post from Ayoko's aide on her social media account read, Days later, she was interviewed by AFP about her arrest ordeal and continued threats. After her tweet on Mr. Farouk, she went incognito, which we, family and friends, thought normal. Perhaps she just wanted to confuse enemies. Aoko is known for exposing sensitive and controversial information about popular people in the government and other powerful persons leaving Kenyans wondering how she is able to know such information. The latest is about Farouk Kibet, directly linked to the president. Aoko has in the past attacked former Prime Minister too. Raila Odinga is not a reformist. He's a shameless opportunist who has been riding on the blood of Kenyans to create wealth for himself, his clique, and his family. He has been playing us unabashedly like Ronaldinho for eons. With Moi, it was cooperating with Kano. With Kibaki, it was Nusumkate. With Uhuru, it was handshake for the sake of peace. With Ruto, after youths were murdered and brains scattered on pavements in the streets of Nairobi, it's broad-based government. The Aratola of Opoda has held the Luo community ransom. The commentator, according to her aide, remains missing, with her whereabouts still unknown for five days now. Aoko's disappearance is gaining more attention, with the Law Society of Kenya, LSK, on Sunday, calling for her immediate release. That's to our offer. We've heard that she's missing and we're asking for any information. Our hotline is still working. Please reach out to the Law Society of Kenya. Every single life counts. So we ask that our, whoever is holding her, that she should be released effective immediately. Let's not be a country live, that we live in intimidation or we live in fear. Ken, Kenya is our country, Kenya is our home. Let us fight to ensure that we uphold the rule of law, that every single person feels that they have a right to enjoy their rights fully in this country. People may say things that are not pleasant for you, however, there is laws to govern the same. Let us deal with people within the confines of the law. A number of big names, including Mbakasi East Member of Parliament, Babu Owino, who is a close friend of the missing online commentator, called for her release. Martha Karua is also one of the big names that has come out to protest against and condemn abductions being conducted by the government's special unit. Martha Karua went ahead to speak about the recent abduction of political activist Boniface Mwange. This morning's abduction of renowned human rights defender Boniface Mwangi from his Lukenya home, Machakos County, a man who has courageously dedicated his life to defending the rights and freedoms of all Kenyans. 
accounts from his wife indicate he was abducted in the presence of his children early today by some men and a woman believed to be police officers and we now know they were and they were not in uniform. They did not identify themselves. They did not say why they were taking him away or where they were taking him to. We actually now know they took him to Kamukunji police station. But that does not excuse that behavior of going commando style like thugs, abducting people without identification and without giving reasons as demanded by the constitution. These kidnappings, disappearances and extrajudicial killings targeted on our youth mainly is now a signature modus operandi of the Ruto regime. These abductions and killings of youth is now a worrying trend and we demand that it stops forthwith. It has now become the signature modus operandi since the Gen Z protests. It has resulted in lengthy illegal detentions like in the case of Bob Jage, Aslam and Jamil Langton. And in some cases, it, it, it does not end up with long detention. It ends up with extrajudicial killing. You remember the young university student, Denzel Omondi, who was kidnapped during the Gen Z protests and surfaced in a quarry dead. You will recall that only two days ago, the barrio of uh, John Jogonakuria of Kapenguria, who was abducted, and within a week, his body surfaces. So this is the signature way in which Ruto is operating. We have credible sources who have indicated that there is a special abduction stroke killer squad, which is comprised of both police and army officers. And this squad, we are told reliably, is based somewhere in Karen, near the DP's residence, and another wing of it is based in Orepolos, in Kajiado. These people also are joined, and mainly this squad is drawn from Dr. Ruto's ethnic community. We are not saying it's all members of the community, but this squad is made up of people he has picked from his community. They are also joined, we are reliably told, by foreigners, fellow East Africans from Burundi, from DRC, and from Uganda, with, and God knows where else. A regime that finds it necessary to create a squad outside of official channels to abduct, murder, and terrorize citizens is a regime that has lost legitimacy and that should be forced out of power. This targeting of activists, journalists, and youth is a direct assault on our constitutions, on the right to life, principles of equality, justice, and freedom. Kenya must not be a place where families live in fear that their loved ones may be taken in the night or any time of the day never to return. The right to life and liberty, as I've said enshrined in our constitution, must be upheld not selectively, not conditionally, but absolutely. I want to ask my colleague to go on from there.